The sayings of Agur, son of Jacob, contain this message. I am weary, O God. I am weary and worn out, O God. I am too stupid to be human, and I lack common sense. I have not mastered human wisdom, nor do I know the Holy One. Who but God goes up to heaven and comes back down? Who holds the wind in his fist? Who wraps up the ocean in his cloak? Who has created the whole wide world? What is his name and his son's name? Tell me if you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. Do not add to his words, or he may rebuke you and expose you as a liar. O oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, Who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may still and thus insult God's holy name. Never slander a worker to the employer, or the person will curse you, and you will pay for it. Some people curse their father and do not thank their mother. They are pure in their own eyes, but they are filthy and unwashed. They look proudly around, casting disdainful glances. They have teeth like swords and fangs like knives. They devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among humanity. The leech has two suckers that cry out, more, more. There are three things that are never satisfied. No, four that never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the thirsty desert, the blazing fire. The eye that mocks the father and despises a mother's instructions will be plucked out by ravens of the valley and eaten by vultures. There are three things that amaze me. No, four things that I don't understand. How an eagle glides through the sky. How a snake slithers on a rock. How a ship navigates the ocean. How a man loves a woman. An adulterous woman consumes a man, then wipes her mouth and says, what's wrong with that? There are three things that make the earth tremble. No, four it cannot endure. A slave who becomes a king, an overbearing fool who prospers, a bitter woman who finally gets a husband, a servant girl who supplants her mistress. There are four things on earth that are small but unusually wise. Ants. They aren't strong, but they store up food all summer. Pyrrhixes. They aren't powerful, but they make their homes among the rocks. Locusts. They have no king, but they march in formation. Lizards. They are easy to catch, but they are found even in king's palaces. There are three things that walk with stately stride. No, four that strut about. The lion, king of animals, who won't turn aside for anything. The strutting rooster, the male goat, a king as he leads his army. If you have been a fool by being proud or plotting evil, cover your mouth in shame. As the beating of cream yields butter and striking the nose causes bleeding, so stirring up anger causes quarrels. I will now read the commentary for Proverbs chapter 30. Because God is infinite, certain aspects of his nature will always remain a mystery. Having too much money can be dangerous, but so can having too little. Being poor can, in fact, be hazardous to spiritual as well as physical health. On the other hand, being rich is not the answer. As Jesus pointed out, rich people have trouble getting into God's kingdom. Like Paul, we can learn how to live whether we have little or plenty. But our lives are more likely to be effective if we have neither poverty nor riches. This sequence of Proverbs contains a fourfold description of arrogance. Notice that a life of pride and abuse of others often begins with a lack of appreciation for one's parents. The command to honor one's father and mother does create negative consequences when rejected. Three things, no four, is a poetic way of saying the list is not complete. The writer of these proverbs is observing the world with delighted interest. Verses 15 through 31 are an invitation to look at nature from the perspective of a keen observer. Ants can teach us about preparation, badgers about wise building, locusts about cooperation and order, and lizards about fearlessness. Compare this to Jesus' teachings in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, 
that an effective way to resist worry involves a careful observation of the birds and the lilies.